Well, I'm here right now with TSM Doublelift after an unfortunate win streak uh, breaking loss against Phoenix One, who, again, many people in the past have thought to be coast level, velocity level. Uh, what is going through your head right now, Doublelift? I know you did the whole interview afterwards on broadcast, but you've had some time to decompress. Uh, well, yeah, we were just thinking about it the whole time while we are doing the fan meet and, like, after the game, and... I think we just we didn't respect them at all during the game. We were just like playing for playing to kill them, playing after the first game at least. After the first game, we were just playing for kills. We would make plays, but we wouldn't focus on like doing it around a, like a certain objective. And I think we just didn't really know how to deal with their champions, and we didn't really even know how to pilot our champions very well. Um, part of it, I think, is because the patch was so huge and changed a lot. I think the top teams and the bottom teams are a little bit closer because. Like the meta, the meta has shifted up, and like we need to like step into high gear and like learn it again, um, what's new and what's good. And God, we just played like shit, dude. I don't know. I made some pretty stupid calls, but honestly, the second game was just we went for plays. We didn't go for an objective afterwards. Everyone just wanted to go back to you know doing whatever they were doing before. The the third game, we fell super far behind early. Soren got cheese ganked level three, like whatever you know that it happens you fall behind but we should still be able to come back and like pull out good team fights for some reason we just like we're unable to win team fights and so we're just gonna go back and like rewatch those games because you know if it's a, if it's two team fight comps clashing we should have the better coordination um i was so phoenix one driving off across yeah, in, their, in their lambo yeah um yeah there's my team leaving right now yeah. but they're done with you yeah they're done i'm off the team i'm yeah. benched yeah i just made I think I made some pretty bad calls in the second and third game, and we could have potentially turned the game around. Like we could have won both, but I'm just gonna go, go back and like rewatch all of, all the things that I was saying and like see if I what could have I, what I could have done differently. Uh. Yeah, maybe rephrase that sentence. Really? Blah, blah, blah. Blah. Yeah. All right. So obviously that happened. Uh, I mean, what do you think this means for Phoenix One? Do you think that they are playing better? I mean, it seems like they've been a rising tide recently, or do you fault your guys, your yourselves, for more of the issues there? I feel like Phoenix One's fine. They're not like super coordinated. I, like they, the first game they just rolled over and died. So maybe that was like a really off game from them. But they're they're probably not even. I'm I'm gonna try to think about the top six teams really fast. Who's making playoffs? Maybe Phoenix One is up there like in playoffs with us, Immortals, C9, TS or. CLG, TL, and then at sixth place, it's like probably tossed between like Envy and Phoenix One. Maybe Phoenix One's better. I don't know. They just played better than us today, but looking at their track record, it wasn't really good. Everyone was saying they're literally just going to go like 0 and 18 this split. Yeah. Maybe having Inori like really did switch things around. He played really well this series, so props to him. Now, for you guys, I mean, a lot of people think that when a team is on a winning streak, that it's all good and yeah, fans are waving at you in the middle of this interview trying to do a serious interview here. You got fans interrupting it. Yeah. What do you have to say for yourself? No, I, I, got, I got really sociable fans. I got yeah. friendly fans. Yeah. How dare you? Anyway, so <laughs> you love them. Good. Uh, no, I mean, I think a lot of people think that whenever a team is on a win streak, that means that obviously it's just like everybody's full of confidence. Everything's going great. Everything's going fantastic. But I've often heard that there's actually like it's almost like a pressure cooker. Each match means that you're going it's going to be you're more nervous about the next match. Uh, I've heard this on both sides of the fence. Like where where were you guys at before this? Oh, yeah, dude, it really is a pressure cooker. You know, like how Mario and Kart, there's the, um, on N64, there's that rubber banding effect where, you know, you're in last place, yeah. or you, you're trying to catch up to the first guy, everyone's, like, throwing blue shells at you, and, like, you know, their, their cars go a little bit faster for some reason because they can just, like, they're just trailing you. Yeah. Um, that's how I feel, like, you know, we paved the way, and we made it really easy for teams to get good because they can just copy us. And so, like, in that sense, our team has, like, always had a lot of, discussions, work, like we work harder than every other team for sure. We have the most hours put into the game, studying the game and playing. Um, on top of that, like we get really, really critical of each other, you know, like every week is just like a new hot topic where I'm not I'm, like, we're not arguing, but we're really like really giving each other a lot of feedback. Um, sometimes it comes off the wrong way and people get pissed off, but it's like when you're at the top, you don't ever want to fall down to you know the level of the other like middle of the pack or other top teams. You all, you need to like 
that's our greatest fear, I guess, is just what if we pull in Immortals, you know, in playoffs? So we're always trying to make sure that doesn't happen. And people might, like, look at this game and be like, dude, this is the end. You know, this is the end for them. This, their win streak's over. You know, they're going to crumble just like Immortals did last split. Uh, I don't think that's the case, obviously. Otherwise, well, I mean, I would never say that, even if it was the case in an interview. <laughs> so who knows if it's the case? Who the knows? mystery will continue it's after this you. interview. It's up to you, the viewer, to decide. Yeah. No, it really isn't. Uh, we played like <laughs> but we learned some important stuff. Yeah. So, obviously, you go back. Uh, speaking of Immortals, you played them next week. Yeah. <laughs> After this game or this match, any nervousness around that? No, not at all. Um, if we play like this, like we did today versus any team, even like Echo Fox, we're probably going to lose. <laughs> so, I'm pretty confident next week it's a to totally different TSM. Like, we're just going to play like normal and... Definitely winning against Immortals. We're still the best team. Okay. Now, finally, the whole reason I wanted to do this interview before, I was like, oh, he'll he'll beat Phoenix One. I'll do an interview with him. It'll be great. I can ask him about how his birthday went. Uh, how was your birthday week? Um, it was good. I let's see, who do we play that weekend? It was just, it was this last week. I have such a bad memory. It was like TL and C9 maybe. Let's no, no. with that. No, no, it was someone else. Apex? Whatever. It was that, a good 2-0. That, was, was, good that was before your birthday. It was a good 2-0. It was before my birthday. Um, on my birthday, it was nice. I went out, um, went to a nice restaurant, took like some time off after scrims. So, I don't know. I'm 23 now, you know? Every single, every time my birthday comes up, I just think about how long my career has been and sort of all the struggle and learning that I've had to go through to like get to this point. I think like most people who come from my time, my era in league, they're not performing super great anymore, or they're retired. Like 90% of them are just retired. Yeah. So I'm pretty proud of my accomplishments, but it's like fun to see how much I can push. 90% of them retired. 50% of that 90% either coaches or owners. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. They fall into like managing or casters, I guess. Yeah, I don't know. It feels nice to know that I'm like a part of a dying breed, I guess. Nobody Does it feel nice? Yeah, it's okay. nice because I'm the last, dude. Okay. I'm unique. Okay, Nobody yeah. else has had so, this. So it's more like the last game. man sir, standing. Yeah, I'm the last man standing. Yeah. Okay, well, I don't know. That sounds more positive. I don't feel much kinship with, like, who else has been around since my time. Special? So as ex special, ex -peque. So as ex from Europe, ex special. Um, There's always one that I people. forget that's, like, quietly been around forever. Maybe, like, Kiwi Kid. But even him, he's, yeah, like, yeah, a, he came he up with like LCS a season three. In, like, season yeah. three. So, yeah, dude, uh, maybe I haven't... Oh, Afro? Yeah, Afro's been around since yeah. around my time, too. Yeah, like, yeah, I guess me and Afro are last of a dying breed. Yeah. It's it's fun, though. Um, I'm glad that my team, they, don't, they didn't, like, tilt or anything. They didn't just, like, start instantly blaming my bad calls. Um, I, I almost kind of expected, you know, like, coming to, coming to my team room afterwards, and then they're just, like, all super depressed, and, like, maybe they're a little bit spiteful. Um... But they took it like, like, I think everyone takes it on themselves, you know, everyone takes responsibility. I'm glad that I'm not on a team where everyone's like pointing at each other like, you fucked up. So my, like, my mistake didn't matter at all because yeah. you messed up more. It's, that's like the worst kind of environment. That's the environment I came from. Sure. So I'm glad that the scene evolved since then. Yeah. So finally, is there anything that you would like to say to any of the TSM fans out there? Um, well, I love you guys. I had a TSM fan come up to me today, actually. Oh, man, I, was, I felt so bad. I got to tell the story. She came up to me. We're doing the fan meet, and she's like, can I kiss you on the cheek? You know, kind of for, like motioning for the picture. And I was, like, so shocked. I was so taken aback because, like, first off, my head's racing from this sh shitty game. Yeah. You've and, never been kissed before, too. Yes, and I've never even touched a girl or even, like, been in, like, a, you know, arm's reach of one. Yeah. Leave room for Jesus. Yeah. And I, I was, like, looked around. I was, like a, like, a little bit stunned for a second. And she kind of took that as, like, and then at the end of it, at the end of when I was done being stunned, I was yeah. I was like, yeah, sure, you know, that's fine. And the, kind of the, maybe the way I said it and the pause that I had made, maybe like made her seem like I didn't want to do it yeah. or that I was doing it out of pity or something. And I just felt so bad because yeah. she was like a really nice fan. She made artwork for us. I was just, man, dude, I'm just too awkward. Yeah. I'm too so awkward. Two awkward nerds trying to negotiate a first kiss. No, 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 no. Actually, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, shout-outs to all my fans who are just super supportive, like that girl. Um, and if any other fans would like to give him a kiss on the cheek, understand that if he's awkward about it at first, he actually is fine with it. That's not what the message that I was trying to convey, but 
You can check out the rest of our coverage of all things esports here at Yahoo Esports.